So we're going to take a look at the method of undetermined coefficients. And this is for solving uh, second order linear ODEs um, that are not homogeneous. And the right hand side, our forcing function, is some type of polynomial, exponential, sine or cosine, or product of those. And those all have you know, that special property that, that when you take their derivatives, they end up being the same type of function. Um, so we're going to go through example one here uh, that's already been completed just to kind of see what it's like and then work through example two in detail. So first you solve the homogeneous form. Then we take the left hand side, keep it the same, replace the forcing function with zero, right, and get that. And there's another methodology for doing that. Uh, it was in the previous experience. Right? You turn it into the characteristic equation, and then you get uh, one or two roots. If you get this one repeated root, right? then uh, you get one solution, and you get a second linearly independent solution by multiplying by x. So these, this is the fundamental solution set for the homogeneous form. And so if we put any combination of those into that left hand side, it's just going to give us zero. So we need another piece to go in there and give us this right hand side function. Uh, the way the undetermined coefficients works is that you choose the form of a particular solution based on that forcing function. So if the forcing function is, in this case, an exponential times a polynomial, um, then we'll try an exponential times polynomial. Um, we know that when we take derivatives of the exponential, that that exponent doesn't change. So obviously, we still need to have a 2x there. Um, but we do know that these coefficients will change in the polynomial, so we don't know what those are. We'll figure that out. Uh, so you pose this as the form based on that. I go ahead and take the derivatives of that first and second derivative, just using the product rule. Then we put that into the original OD, the non-homogeneous form. So there's the second derivative minus 4 times the first derivative plus 4 times the function itself. And you see that everything has that exponential. So we can divide away the exponential and just get a, in a differential equation for u. Um, since the second derivative of u is supposed to be a quadratic, right? that would make us think that if we were to integrate twice, that u itself would be a fourth order polynomial. Well, we don't know what those coefficients are going to be. So we leave those as arbitrary constants, A, B, C, D, E. The book does this uh, notation with the capital letters starting with A going up. And uh, we're going to take derivatives of U. So there's the first derivative, there's a the second derivative, just using the power rule. And then we substitute that into the differential equation for u that we got in step four. Uh, now that differential equation just had u double prime, so we're just going to take the u double prime expression and we're going to put it in there. And that would give us this. This should tell us what those coefficients are. Now it doesn't have a and b in it, and then it turns out that a and b can be whatever you want, but this will let us match up what c, d, and e are, because the like terms have to match up. So uh, let's start with x squared terms. There's one x squared term here, and there's one here. And those have to be equal. So that means 6 must be equal to 12e. So e is 1 half. Uh, with the x terms, 6d must match up with negative 3. So d is negative 1 half. And with the constants, you have 2c equal to 1. So c is also 1 half. So you take the values for C, D, and E, and you put those in. That's U. U times E to the 2x gives you this. Right? And you notice that technically A and B are given by C1 and C2, because this E to the 2x also showed up in the fundamental solution set. Um, so it would be kind of pointless to have an A and B, um, because they would, those terms, if you distributed here, would be linearly dependent, and so you could just combine them with uh, the fundamental solution set. Okay, so that's the general process. Let's go ahead and do it with 
uh, another example, and this one actually has initial conditions. So we'll start by taking the homogeneous form of D. So I'm just going to take the left hand side, right, set equal to zero. Uh, we know that this then leads to a characteristic equation. Gamma squared minus 3 gamma plus 2. And then we will see if we can factor that. And we can. This is gamma minus 1. That's gamma minus 2. And so we get two, two real solutions to this characteristic. And that'll lead to our fundamental solution set. So if y1 is e to the x, y2 is e to the 2x. Now, the particular solution is based on the forcing function. So in this problem, forcing function is an exponential times a cosine plus a sine. So we're going to have the same setup. Uh, we're going to do the same thing we did in that first example, where we're going to just leave the cosine sine part as u and sort of try to eliminate the exponential first. Um, this makes the math a little easier. So e to the 3x times u of x, right? 3x because there's a 3x there. Let's go ahead and take derivatives of that. So we have e to the 3x times u prime plus 3e to the 3x times u. And we can clean that up a little. Now we're going to take a second derivative, so if e to the 3x is u double prime plus 3u prime plus 3e to the 3x times u prime plus 3u. And again, we can clean it up. There's even a pattern here if you want to find that. But you can actually jump right to these without going through those derivatives. So we're going to substitute the particular solution and its derivatives into the original ODE. And this will get a little long, so I don't know if it'll fit on one line. Start with the third, sorry, second derivative. And then here's the first derivative. And careful if you're not doing this factoring, uh, that you make sure that you are distributing the coefficients on the derivatives and the particular solution. So we can now clean this up by dividing through by e to the 3x, so that'll go away. And then we can combine the u's. So 
So we've got 6u prime minus 3u prime, so that'll be 3u prime. And then we've got 9u minus 9u. So those will actually add to 0. But then there's still the 2u here. So you just have the 2u left. Okay. So again, we get this differential equation in terms of u. And we know that u has got to be some kind of sines and cosines, because when we take those derivatives, all right, we're just going to get more sines and cosines. So based on this, we will say that u is a plus bx times cosine of x plus c plus dx times sine of x. And there's a couple things here. One is some people like to do subscripts at this point, and so you could do a1, b1, and a2, b2, because uh, these things can start to get longer, and you might not want to go so far in the alphabet. So feel free to use that notation, um, or any notation as long as you're organized. The other is there. there's no x, linear term. There's no x term in front of the cosine on the forcing function. Um, but because we have one with the sine, and because if you put one in here with sine and you take a first derivative, you're going to get one with a cosine on the left. So you, you can try that out. Try not having b. Um, you're going to be stuck with a cosine x term on the left that, that you can't get rid of. Um, so we're basically going to have the bx here to balance with when we take the derivative of the dx there. Okay, so that gives us the form of u. Now we're going to take derivatives of this. Right? This is where you might start to think that uh, it would be really nice to use technology such as Sage. And uh, we can show how to do that at the end. Right, so we're going to have a plus bx times the derivative of this, which is negative sine plus the derivative of a plus bx, which is b times cosine. And then with the other part, we have c plus dx times the derivative of sine, which is cosine, plus the derivative of c plus d, which is d times sine. Right, you can clean this up a little. By, we really want to group things in terms of polynomials with cosine and polynomials with sine. Um, so we've been keeping the cosines first. We can continue to do that. Uh, you're going to have not just c plus d, but the b plus c plus dx. That's cosine. And then with the signs, you're going to have d minus a minus dx, right, because it's a negative sign. All right, let's do it again. Second derivative. So we'll have b plus c plus dx times the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine. plus the derivative of b plus c plus dx, which is d, times the derivative, or times cosine. And then we have d minus a, d minus a minus bx, times the derivative of sine, which is cosine. plus the derivative of d minus a minus bx, which is just a negative b, uh, times sine. All right, and try to clean that up. So stuff with cosine first, 
Uh, you see we have a D and another D. So there's going to be a 2D there. Minus A minus BX. And then with the signs, we have a negative B and a negative B. So there'll be a B. And you can make this minus because actually all the coefficients for sine are negative. Um, or you can just keep the negative in here. Whatever is going to make it easy for you. 2B minus C minus DX. So we now have U, U prime, U double prime. We're going to put that in the differential equation from step four. And that'll help us find what A, B, C, and D are. Right, so here is U double prime. And sort of sorry, I'm gonna to try to break this up to separate lines. So that's U double prime. Uh, and then it's plus 3u prime so that's going to be 3 times this and then 2 times u which is here Now this looks a little crazy, but you want to think about, again, dividing sines and cosines up. And then within that, you want to divide up, um, you want to divide up the linear and constant terms. So uh, let's go ahead and set up an equation for the uh, cosine terms. So these are the terms that are constant times the cosine. And what we have is uh, we have 2d minus a. And then we have 3b and 3c from these. And then we have 2a from that. And then on the right hand side, we have the 21. Let's actually get that. And we can go ahead and simplify this because we have a 2a minus a. So let's go ahead and do a, combine those like terms just to get a regular a. So there's a there. Now let's get an equation for the linear cosine term. So this is x times cosine of x terms. All right, uh, top we have minus b. And then in the second line, we have 3D. And then in the third line, we have 2B. And then on the right-hand side, we have 0. There actually is no x cosine x on the right-hand side. And the B minus 2B can be simplified. So you can actually just get that. Now let's try doing the sine of x terms. Up we have negative 2b minus c. And then we have 3. Don't forget this 3 and these 2 distribute all the way here. So 3d minus 3a. And then the 2c. And that should equal negative 11. And there's some simplifying here because we have 2c minus c. So we can combine those. 
All right, last one is the x times sine of x terms. All right, in the top we have a negative d. In the second line we have a 3, negative 3b. Three and the third line we have 2d. And then in the right-hand side we have negative 10. The 2d minus d is just a d. We get that. So this is a system. It's four equations and four unknowns. Uh, these could be pretty tough. Uh, if, if these are really tough, you, you definitely want to use technology to solve them. This one can be solved by hand, so we will. Because if you look at the two equations from the linear terms, that's a system of two equations with two unknowns that you can solve for. B and D. Uh, and so what I would do is just use substitution method here. You can pretty easily tell that b equals negative 3d. That means you can substitute that in for b in the second equation. So negative 3 times negative 3d. Uh, negative 3, negative 3 is 9, and so this is just saying 10d equals negative 10. So D equals negative 1. Uh, once you have that D equals negative 1, then you can tell that B equals 3. So we know what b and d are, then we can use the other two equations to figure out a and c. So replacing b with 3, we would have 9 and negative 6, and replacing d with negative 1, get a negative 2, and a negative 3. Uh, you can then get the constants all on the right hand side. Um, so this is 7, which would make it subtracting 7 from both sides, give you a 14. And here's his negative 9, so we could add 9 to both sides, giving you a negative 2. And then we can go through and solve these, just like we did the other one. So uh, a would equal 14 minus, actually, let's use um, Let's use the uh, addition method. So you're going to multiply the top equation by 3. So it would be 3a and 9c. And 14 times 3 is 42. And then when you add those together, The a's will add to 0, and you'll get 10c equals 40, which tells you c is 4. And if c is 4, then negative 3a is negative 6, which means a is 2.
So we now know what A, B, C, and D are. So we'll go back to what U was in the formula for U. And we're going to put in those numbers. You. Uh, now that's not the general solution, so don't forget that that our particular solution was an exponential multiplied with this. So we need to replace u with this. And don't forget the solution to the homogeneous form. So we have that. So we do, uh, this is where the constants come in. C1 times y1 plus C2 times y2 plus that particular solution gives us our general solution. Now to find C1 and C2, as usual, we use initial conditions. Those are given in this example. So if we were to apply the first condition, that when x is 0, y is 0, we would get 0 equals c1 plus c2 plus 2. Right, everything else is going to go away. So c1 plus c2 equals negative 2. And we have to take the derivative here. You're going to get a 2 from this exponential. And then you do have the derivative here can be kind of complicated. You can actually go back, because we did find it in terms of a, b, c, and d. And uh, you could use that to help you out. Now, that's just the derivative of u. So remember how this works. It would be the exponential times the derivative of u. plus the derivative of the exponential times u itself. And that's obviously too long to fit on one line. And then, of course, we need to put in what B, C, D, and A are. So C, C is 4. D is negative 1. And B is 3. And 3 and 4 is 7, and negative 1, negative 2 is negative 3. All right, so there's the derivative. If the derivative is 6 when x is 0, we can get what that means. So when x is 0, these exponentials go away to 1, and the signs go away to 0. So you would have sign stuff gone completely. And the cosines go to 1. 
and x goes away as well. All right, so you actually have 7 plus 6 there, which is just 13. And that should be 6. So you get another system, and uh, you can solve this um, in the usual way. Uh, we've done quite a bit with algebra, so uh, let's go over to Sage, show how to do this in Sage, and then show how to do some of the other stuff in Sage. Uh, sorry, CoCalc and uh, CoCalc. So uh, we're going to take this system of equations and solve it in CoCalc. So we're going to define C1 and C2 as variables, and then you need to use the solve command and then put in the system. Uh, we're using double equals for the equals and the equations. Uh, put the equations separated by commas in brackets, and then list the variables you're solving for after that. Um, so the uh, first equation, C1 plus C2, plus 2 equals 0. And the second equation, c1 plus 2 times c2 plus 13 equals 6. And then hit run to have it solve. It finds that c1 is 3 and c2 is negative 5. Then you can go back to this and write out the final answer. 3 and negative 5. So there's a 3 here. And a negative 5 there. And that is the solution to that initial value problem. So I think a lot of the heavy lifting was maybe taking the derivatives of u and then having it solve the system. And uh, a lot of that's done in the co-calc document that I gave you. Uh, so you want to you know, do one of these problems, find something that's similar. Um, so here's an example where they have the uh, cosines and sines times the uh, polynomials. That's pretty close. So go ahead and take that. And then you need to update it with to match up with the problem you're using. So I have used the zeros and ones and twos sort of as subscripts instead of A, B, C, D. Um, I'm going to try to keep that for this problem. Um, and we actually don't need this many. We only have an A, B, C, D. So we'll just use A0, B0, A1, B1. And then we'll go ahead and put in the form of the particular solution. So that was e to the 3x. And then, you know, here you can put in the entire thing because CoCalc can handle it. Cosine times a linear. Oh, I already have cosine there. So linear times cosine plus linear times sine. So we'd basically just add in this exponential. It's 3x, right? Yeah. Uh, then we need to put in the differential equation, the left-hand side. So we go back to so using that left-hand side, the differential equation, y double prime minus 3y prime plus 2. So y double prime minus 3y prime plus 2y. And then we'll have it take the derivatives and expand and combine like terms and all that. All right. 
Uh, now, when you're doing this with Sage, it doesn't do everything. So you now need to take this and you need to cross-reference it with this. And you need to still set up the system of equations. So uh, knowing that it's going to be matched up with 21, negative 11, and 10, you can then set up a system of equations to solve. So we'll be using a0, a1, b0, b1. And in the same way we did on paper, you say, well, the first one is going to be the stuff that is uh, x or cosine with a constant. And so these are kind of sorted, right? This is x times cosine, x times cosine, x times sine, x times sine, and then cosine, 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 sine, 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 sine. So you can actually look at the ones that are just cosine here. And we can use that to set up our equation. So a0 plus 3 times a1 plus 3 times b0 plus 2 times b1. And that should match up with 21. And then we could do the x cosine stuff. That's just the first two terms. So a1 plus 3b1. Let's forget those multiplications. And that should equal 0, because there was no x cosine term on the right-hand side. Now for the sine constants, it's the last four here. So 3 times a0 minus 2 times a1 plus b0 plus 3 times b1. Right. And that would go with the negative 11. Right. Last one is the x times sine terms. That's right here. So negative 3 a1 plus b1. I believe that's negative 10. Yep, negative 10. And then we have it do the solving for us. All right, and that doesn't match up with what we have, so there's got to be a slight mistake. Let me find it real quick. Okay, so uh, looking for a mistake, uh, double checking things, and uh, there was a negative sign overlooked. So you notice that with, with CoCalc, it's got long outputs like this, it puts it on two lines. You gotta be careful, uh, there's actually a subtraction sign here, which implies that this is a negative 3a0. Uh, and so I have this equation here that's setting up the sine constant terms, and I just had a regular. 3 times a0, and that was giving us the incorrect answers. It should be a negative 3 times a0. When you run that, you get the same four numbers. Um, so a is 2, b is 3, c is 4, and d is negative 1. Um, so that would be the way to use CoCalc to get those numbers. And uh, you see that your biggest chance for mistake is, is setting up these, these things. So in the lab, that's usually where people mess up. Just be really careful um, that you're getting that those equations right. Um, all right, uh, and so that should be all you need to do for undetermined coefficients.